بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ریگارڈنگ دا کانسیپٹ آف پروفٹ ہڈ دا مسکنسیپشن وی انٹینڈ ٹو ریموو ٹو ڈے ریلیٹس ٹو دا نوشن ایز ٹو وائی پروفٹس ور سینٹ بائی دی آل مائٹی واٹ واز دا نیڈ فار اے پروفٹ اور واٹ واز دا نیڈ فار دا پروفٹس ٹو بی سینٹ بائی دی آل مائٹی ناؤ دے آر مینی پیپل ہو تھنک دیٹ دس ون آف دا نیڈس فار سینڈنگ اے پروفٹ واز ٹو میک اے پرسن اویئر آف دی ایگزٹنس آف دی آل مائٹی and it is only the, through the prophets of god that we are able to be, become aware that there is a supreme being who has created this universe and there are also people who think that prophets were sent in order to inform man of what good and evil is so therefore these are the two things which many people say are the reasons for which prophets of god are sent now if we analyze both these premises and both these conclusions in the light of the quran we will not find them consistent with the teachings of the quran The Quran very clearly says that as far as the existence of God is concerned, no prophet is required to prove it. No prophet is required uh, to communicate this, uh, this concept to man. This, uh, this existence of uh, God is found in the intuition of every person. Every person born on this earth ha- finds God in his own intuition. And so therefore for this there is no need for a prophet. Similarly, as far as good and evil are concerned, uh, these concepts also are ordained by birth. They are innately found in every person. We don't need a prophet to tell us what, uh, what evil and, uh, uh, and good is. Good and evil are ordained in our own, on our own selves, in our own intuition. And the Quran explicitly says, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا تَقْوَاهَا the, the Almighty has implanted this awareness of good and evil in, the, in a person. And a person does not require a prophet to find out what good and evil is through him. He knows it uh, through his own self. Now, now, on the other hand, what the Quran says is that the need of a prophet is, is twofold. There are two grounds for which an, uh, a prophet is needed. Firstly, for the completion of guidance, this innate guidance which is found in, in a person, of course, it requires some more details. And uh, for example, we, uh, we, he wants to know how he should communicate with his, uh, his Almighty, what are the various rituals of worship through which he should do so. So there are certain details which he needs to be communicated and prophets of God communicate these details. And of course, they also remind uh, people of these basic uh, things which are found in his, uh, in, in his own intuition. Uh, and they remind, uh, they are, they're a source of reminder that these are the things which are found in his own intuition and he must not forget them. So this is one of the reasons for which a prophet is sent. And we can call this completion of guidance. And the second reason for which prophets of God are sent, which is mentioned in the Quran, is that they primarily communicate the truth or there are means of communicating the truth in its ultimate form before the addressees. And it's, it is, this, such is the conclusive nature of this communication that once this is done, uh, the addressees are left with no excuse to deny that what the truth is. So this is the second need for a prophet. And a prophet is a means of conclusive communication of the truth after which reward and punishment, of course, uh, become something very warranted. So these are the two reasons for which prophets of God are sent. And it can be safely said that what people have derived that uh, through prophets of God, we, are, we, are, uh, we become aware of the existence of God. And similarly, through prophets of God, we become aware of what good and evil are. Both these things, the Quran says, they are not what the prophets are sent for. Both these things, these things are already known uh, by man. And so therefore, it, is, it can be further be concluded that people to whom prophets, the, the message of a prophet of God has not reached, they shall be held accountable on the day of judgment on the basis of his, their own in, awareness of God was of course found in their intuition. And on the basis of the basics of evil and good, good and evil, the awareness of good and evil, which is found in their in, intuition. So these will be the two aspects, these will be the two premises on which they will be held accountable on the Day of Judgment.